You're listening to Feathers, a podcast of stories about God speaking and His people having just enough faith to believe Him and obey. I hope these stories inspire you and encourage you to take flight in your own faith. I'm your host, Amy Bennett, and this is Season 3, Episode 7. Well, hey guys, and welcome to This Week of Feathers. I am so excited to have you here. Thank you so much for coming back every week to hear these stories. I enjoy so much hearing from you guys as you reach out on social media or email to let me know that these stories are encouraging to you. And I am just so thankful that God has put me in this place to be able to um, be right in the center of it. And I'm just so glad that you guys have come along. I just know this is all about you, for you guys listening, that I just wholeheartedly believe that it's not about me, it's about you and you need to be able to hear these stories for all the things that God has for you to do. So this week, I'm very excited to talk to Nikki Koziars. She is um, an author. She's a speaker, and she works at Proverbs 31 Ministries, which is where I found her. Um, I have seen her at a couple different events that Proverbs 31 has done, and so excited that she has her first book coming out here in just a couple of weeks, and very excited to talk to her about her um story of obedience that goes along with that. So Nikki is so much fun to talk to, and I'm really excited for you to hear this interview today. And I really hope that you get to pick up her book, Five Habits of a Woman Who Doesn't Quit. So here's my conversation with Nikki Koziars. Nikki, welcome to Feathers today. Thanks, Amy. I'm so excited to be here with you. Oh, I'm so excited to have you here too. Um, For those that don't know you, how about you introduce yourself and your family and all that good stuff? Yeah. So um, my name is Nikki Koziars and I am with Proverbs 31 Ministries. I am, uh, my staff title is online Bible study coordinator, but I am also on our our speaker team, and I am married to the wonderful and amazing man who makes all my Pinterest dreams come true. His name is Chris, and together we have um, three daughters. They're very beautiful, but they are very hormonal, and uh, <laughs> we live on a place called the Fixer Upper Farm where we have a barnyard full of barnyard babies. Um, we have four pigs, four goats, and one blind chicken. And, um, yeah, so I am a a wife, a mom, a speaker, a blogger, a writer, and uh, just actually published my first book. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm so excited about it. Um, Okay, there's so much good stuff to talk about there. Um, First, I have to talk about the online Bible studies and just say, I actually did my first one last spring um, with What Happens When Women Walk in Faith. Oh, my gosh, that was a good one. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And I'll tell you what my favorite part about it was actually the conference call. I did the conference call series with it. Oh my gosh. The, um, just the teaching of the Bible and Lisa's experience in the Holy land, all that just totally blew my mind. Yeah. That, um, that study and also her other study, um, what happens when women say yes to God? Like when I look back Mm -hmm. on kind of my favorite ones, those two are the ones that are on the very top. Yes, those, I mean, I have, you know, I've been in the church like my whole life, but I was, I, I kind of, when I originally was thinking about purchasing the conference call, because I knew it was going to be teaching about the Bible, I was kind of on the fence, like, oh, do I really need to, you know, listen? And oh my gosh, yeah, it was just, it was just amazing. So um, thanks for all your work on that. Sure. Yeah, and so now I have to talk about your farm animals. Oh my gosh, I love hopping on Periscope and seeing your pigs. <laughs> They're my favorite. Yeah. They, you know, I get more questions and comments about my pigs and our dog than I do anything else in my life. (laughs) Yeah. So you have a famous dog. Tell us about that. Yes. He's sitting right here looking at me right now. He just tilted his head. Um, Yeah. Herman is our pug. And I call him, I say in the book, he's slightly famous because he, um, my girls started an Instagram account for him. And um, he is on there almost like a couple times a week, not every day. But I always disclaimer that this is my children running this account. So (laughs) the stuff that Herman quote unquote says, it's not from me. It's from them. (laughs) Oh, gosh, that is so much fun. I have a little dog, too. Her name is Bella, and she's like my little sidekick. So um, just love that. (laughs) 
Yeah. So you have you have goats, pigs, and okay. I have to ask about the blind chicken. Mm, yes. How in the world did you figure out you had a blind chicken? Okay, so we did not figure out that she was blind. That's why she lives with us. Um, The farm that she came from, she was getting beaten up by the other chickens. And so the guy, like, I guess he did some research to find out what was wrong with her. And apparently, if you put a chicken on top of, like, a, a cinder block, and if they don't jump down, that's a sign that something is off with their eyesight. So she would, like, lean over and act like she wanted to go, but because she can't see, she didn't know where she was going to. Does that make sense? Yes. Oh my gosh. I would have never thought about that. Cause yeah, you can't jump down if you, you know, you can't put your little foot down. Yeah. Oh, bless his heart. I know, but Amy, let me tell you something. That chicken, she thinks that she is a pig now because Oh my gosh. She um she sleeps with the pigs and she was actually there when the babies were born. And so uh-huh. um it was really cute. Like for a while the babies would follow her around. And then um sadly we lost our mama pig a couple months ago. Um, but it's it's hysterical because like they just, they stay right with Penny, our blind chicken now. It's so funny. <laughs> oh my gosh. I've never, I love those things. Have you ever seen on Facebook where they're like, it's where two different yes. types of animals are like best yes. friends. Yeah. They should make it to one of those videos. Yeah. That's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness, so much fun. So we're actually going to talk about how you got onto your farm today. And so I'm excited um, to, to think about and talk about with you uh, your steps of obedience um, to getting your family to that farm. So I would love for you to kind of step back and tell us how you got there. Yeah. Okay. So here's the thing. People ask me all the time, Nikki, did you dream of being a farmer? And the answer is no. Like this was never part of... Um, my plan, my hopes, my dreams. When like when I was a little kid, I never said, oh, I want to have a farm one day. Um, but you know, God just starts to, I think as we get older, God, God starts to change some stuff inside of us. And mm-hmm. um, my husband and I kind of had a little bit of a longing to have more land and, uh, you know, maybe to have like an old barn or something like that to have events in one day. Like it was one of those one day, someday kind of dreams. You know? Yes. I, I just have to tell you, like we, our family sort of like having these conversations, like wouldn't it be nice to be on a lot of land? It wouldn't it be nice to have a goat. Yeah. Like I want chickens. My husband wants a goat and he wants a donkey. Aww. I wonder if it has to do with the age of our children. My children age from 10 to 13. Okay. I think yours are pretty similar, yep. right? Yep. We're right in that same season. <laughs> Huh. I wonder if that's related. Anyway, keep going. Okay. So really the way that this all came to be was we were living and I tell the whole story in the book, five habits of a woman who doesn't quit, but it started because we were living in a neighborhood that had one of those homeowners associations that, um, have you seen those TV shows where like the HOAs are a little bit strict, yeah, a little, <laughs> a little crazy, a little out there. Um, I've heard of them. Okay, mm-hmm. well, they exist, and I know that now. <laughs> um, but you know, we, my husband owns his own business. He's an electrical contractor, and so he often has to have big equipment at our house. Um, and so we lived in this neighborhood for a couple of years, and you know, it like we kept our yard nice, we kept the shutters the right colors, all of that stuff was totally fun. But something happened on the homeowners association. I don't know if they got a new board or or what happened, but something happened. And all of a sudden, like every other week, we were getting these letters with people complaining about my husband's truck or this tractor or, and it's not like Amy, it's not like they were sitting there for weeks. It was like for a day. <laughs> so we kind of got to the place where it was kind of like, okay, we can't accommodate these new rules that they have and we can't fight them on it. So, you know, if you can't beat them, join them. If you can't join them, move. <laughs> so we, um, we made the decision that it was time for us to move. And we started looking in our small community that we lived in. Um, we had no intentions of pulling our kids out of our, their schools or anything. And found several houses that we made offers on and then like it would fall through for this reason or that reason. And where we lived, there just weren't a lot of houses for sale. So it was kind of like 
take it or leave it kind of deal. So we were to the point though, where like school was getting ready to start something, a decision had to be made. And so one day I sat down and I was doing my normal search on uh, realtor.com to see mm-hmm. where, like if any new listings had popped out and I expen- I extended my reach just a little bit. Like I'm talking maybe five miles outside of our little town um, because we just couldn't find anything. And so nothing popped up. But then as I kept scrolling, this one like featured listing popped up somehow and I clicked on it and I was like, oh my goodness, like there's no way this, they can't be that price. How come? And so I started looking at it and then I looked a little bit closer and I realized it was in a zip code that was about 45 minutes away from where we were. And so immediately I was like, nope, that's not for us. Um, And you know, Amy, I think sometimes we often discount what God is doing because we're so determined to go our own way. Mm, That is the truth. And so after I kind of clicked off that and thought, oh, that's a nice little dream, but that's not where we're at right now. My husband came home and I said, he said, did you find anything new? And I said, well, this one property popped up, but it's too far away. And he was like, well, let me look at it. So he hopped on and looked at it and he agreed it was too far away. We weren't in the season of life for that. He was said, but let's just go drive by it. <laughs> That's always the death sentence. It like, it let's is. just go look at it. <laughs> <laughs> so we got in our car and we drove and drove and drove. And we came to this long gravel road and um, started driving down it. And then my girls were all in the back seat. And, and we came around the corner where there's this big oak tree. And as soon as we came around the corner, all three of my girls started screaming, it's our farm. It's a farm. And I was like, calm down. Like, we are just driving by this right now. (laughs) And so we started to get a little closer to the house, and we realized why it was priced the way it was. Um, It was a hot mess. And Mm. I mean, like, it had been abandoned. There was weeds that were six feet tall. Um, The pool was infested with snakes. Um, oh, no, no, no. There no. was a building that <laughs> smelled like somebody had died in it. I mean, it was it was awful. But we stood there looking out into the pasture. And it was like, Amy, it was like the trees were like swaying, almost as like they were saying hello to us. It was, it was super strange. And we kind of just looked at each other and said, well, that would be fun. But, you know, we just can't do this right now. And so we got in the car to come back home and both my husband and I could not get this property out of our heads. And so we made this drastic decision that we were going to pack up our little suburban family and uh, start something new, something different. And so we started the process of buying the farm and, you know, it was not a super easy process. I talk about this in the book that um, we actually had several times where we were scheduled to close on the property and it fell through for the craziest reasons. And I think as women who are pursuing obedience with Jesus Christ, there is always going to be opportunities for opposition in our lives when it comes to stepping all the way through with God. But every season of opposition is an opportunity for God to reveal His power. And so we just kept going and we kept pursuing it. And um, the day came when it was time for us to close on the farm. And my husband and I, Amy, we were shaking when we got to the lawyer's office because First of all, we were like, oh my gosh, if anything else happens that makes this thing fall apart, like we're going to lose our minds. But then we were also in this place where we were like, oh my gosh, like we're about to do this. <laughs> and so we, um, we, we, signed the, we signed our lives away for the next few hours and we're handed the keys of the property. And so began the many adventures on the Fixer Upper Farm. <laughs> Wow. So I want to talk about that. I I love that. And I want to talk about sort of like your faith through this. And I love that you brought up the opposition because I think so many times we think, well, as long as everything goes smoothly, God must be in this. And if it doesn't, then God must not be in this. Like, oh, you know, something happened with the closing. That's, that's a sign from God that 
that we shouldn't do this. Yes. Yeah. And you know, sometimes through that process, I got to the point where I wanted to like slap people because I was like, please, like people were like, you guys are crazy. This is stupid. Like you can't keep doing this. And it just got to the place where I was like, if one more person tells me that we shouldn't be doing this, I'm going to lose my mind because when you're trying to obey God, you already have enough self-doubt that you're wrestling with. Um, and then added on to that other people who are, you know, are you sure you should do that? That's a sign. Maybe you should go a different direction. Um, it starts to be really frustrating. And I think to become a woman who doesn't quit, you know, it's not this place where we like arrive at saying, well, I know that God told me this. It's not that because, you know, Amy, I'm sure that you have felt that too. There's been things where you felt like you were supposed to do this and it didn't happen for whatever reason. But I think when we become a woman who doesn't quit, we keep going until the last possible second, until there are no other options, until, you know, all of our options have been exhausted and we're just at that place where we know we have been so faithful to God through this process. Mm-hmm. And so you didn't really talk about it much, but like clearly you must, you had some sort of directive that this was God's way for you, right? Yeah, I think, you know, there like, okay, there was no like sign in the sky or, you know, kind of direction or anything like that. But I think where it really was clear to me that this was where I was supposed to go was how my husband and I both felt when we left the property. Um, Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times, especially in a marriage, it's super important that whatever, you know, your God dream is, it's in alignment with who you're aligned with, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, because that's the way we were with, um, our adoption is for a while I was the one kind of pushing it, but I was thinking there is no way that I'm going to push anybody, you know, especially my husband to adopt because he's got to be in it 110% with me or this will never work. Right. So yes, that sounds like the same kind of situation here. Yeah. And I think Amy, for those like people listening that, you know, you're not buying a farm, you're not adopting, you know, there's all kinds of steps of obedience. I really believe this, that God will put the right person beside you to walk through that. And in the book, I talk about this journey that Ruth and Naomi take together. Um, God has never called us to this island of isolation where we just, you know, follow through with him by ourselves. Sure, there's secret places where God wants to just take you personally. Um, Steps of obedience, you know, whether it's your quiet time or, you know, reading a book or studying a book of the Bible. Sure, those things are steps of obedience that God says, this is just for you. But I really believe that God, when God's given you a dream, a purpose, a destiny, He is going to put someone beside you to walk through that. They may not be the one who ultimately, you know, does it with you, but they're going to be that person to believe in you and to support you and to cheer you on the entire way. Mm -hmm. I have found that to be true. Um, As we've stepped out, there's people, you know, coming alongside, just cheering us on. So, yeah. So Nikki, you talk in your book, um, habits that you, you know, you've talked about habits of women who don't quit. And I think this is so important in all of these calls that God has for us that we don't quit, you know, midway. Um, Can you talk about that a little bit, especially I think number three is is, that you talk about is really significant. Yeah. So habit number three of the woman who doesn't quit is she stays open to the movement of God in her life. And I know that sounds like a really broad kind of out there concept. Like, what does that even mean, Nikki? Right. Um, But really what it comes down to is this place of humility and surrender. When we get to this place where we let humility and surrender hold hands together, I really believe that that is when we start to see the movement of God in our lives. And Amy, I I don't know if you have bad habits, but I have quite a few. (laughs) And one of my bad habits is when I fall asleep at night, I tend to close my fist really tight and I stick my thumbs like under my fingers, almost kind of like what a child would do. I don't know why as a grown woman, I still do this, but it's, it's one of the bad habits that I have. But I read that if you sleep like that, like if you sleep with your, your fist real tight or your body real tight, it can cause you to have arthritis later in life. 
And so oh, interesting. I have been like having to retrain my brain when I go to sleep at night. So I lay my head down and then I, I have to say, Nikki, fist open, fist open. And so sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes I still wake up and have my hands really tight. But I think that is what it looks like to follow after God. It's every day waking up and saying, God, I want to stay open to your movement today. So that means my fists are open. I, I want what, what you want to do in and through me to come from this place of humility and surrender. And Amy, I think in our culture today, we have a kind of misconstrued perception about what humility with God is. And I think that sometimes we confuse it. We think humility is humiliation, right? Like mm -hmm. if God's going to humble me, it's going to make me look really bad or it's going to be painful or it's going to be this process where, where I feel like everyone around me is watching me, you know, fall and, you know, the time I walked into a speaking engagement and f fell flat on my face, that was humiliation, okay? God didn't <laughs> make that happen. I made that happen. But the time where I felt this prompting in my spirit to pick up the phone and call a leader and apologize for something I said, that was humility. And on the other side of that conversation was not humility. There was grace, God's grace. And so when a woman is learning to stay open to the movement of God in her life, that place of humility and surrender where, God, my fists are open, I'm willing to let, lay my dreams down to let my agenda step to the side so that you can do something powerful in and through me, I think is the key to a woman who wants to have obedience in her life. Mm -hmm. And I think, too, humility is so much about seeing our position um, compared to God and not that he's humiliating you, but you, you realize how big and how wonderful he is. And then our place against him. Right. And like that humbles me. It's like, Oh, that he would use me yes. even in his kingdom work. That's that humbles you. Right. Um, and that's not making you feel silly or stupid or whatever. It's just, I think it's just kind of, you know, put you in your place sort of thing. Like literally, you know, not literally, but um, just thinking about your place right. with God and, and knowing that when you are humble, and I think you're just, you're totally right that when you are humble and you know your place toward, you know, against God, that he's so big and, you know, um, that it immediately wants you to open yourself up to what he has for you. Right. Yeah. Because you're like, oh, you are so big. You know what happens. Like I can follow you because you are so faithful and, and, and wise. And, and it does. It is. I love that picture that you have of the fist. It opens your hand and say like, whatever you have for me, yeah. whatever you have for me, because you're so good and you're so big that, that I can follow through with that. Right. And I think Amy, it goes along with the verse in Isaiah 55, eight that says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts and your ways are not my ways. Absolutely. We've talked about that several times on the podcast because when you're really following in faith and following in obedience, you cannot lean on your own mm -hmm. thoughts. <laughs> no, my thoughts, they try to convince me all kinds of wrong things, right? <laughs> right. Yes. It's kind of scary, actually, if we would follow all of our thoughts. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and even, and I love that you, you brought that up is that even the people around you, mm. you know, try to convince you to go another way. But when you've heard from God, um, and, I, and I think there's so much importance and you even talked about community, like a lot of times, you know, people will come alongside you and just confirm how they see um, God working. Um, we have a mutual friend, Elizabeth, that was on last season and she talked about, when her family was moving and, and how the people that she worked for, um, when she told them, they immediately confirmed that they could see God working. Yeah. And so I think that's absolutely valid that people would, you know, come along and confirm. But, um, you know, I, I think they're also, it's like you said, there's some people who are trying to convince you otherwise of what God has told you right. as well. So we just have to be in it. And again, I love those open, open hand. Mm -hmm. We have to just be so open to God's prompting. Yeah. Say, God, what do you want? Like, what are you doing? Um, and I, and I have seen too, in many different uh, stories where God does redirect, mm -hmm. like you think you're going one way and in the middle of it, he turns you a different way. Right. Yeah. Um, so you, you end up not where you thought you were going to be. Right. 
yeah, this whole farm is that situation. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being on today, Nikki. I really, um, I really appreciate you sharing that. And I'm so excited about your book. So tell us more about the book and, and where they can find it. Absolutely. So um, the book is called Five Habits of a Woman Who Doesn't Quit. And it is available anywhere books are sold. But you can go right now um, to fivehabitsbook.com. And um, if you pre-order the book, you can um, put in your receipt number. There's a way that you can do that on there. I cannot explain how to do that because that's techie stuff that I have nothing to do with, but it's on there. Um, but we are going to get you this thing called, it's an assessment um, about what type of quitter are you? And, you know, I think that sometimes, number one, we don't even realize that we've quit something. Um, but then there's other types of quitters that I talk about in the book. And so you can take this assessment to find out what type of quitter are you. And then I tell you which of the five habits I think you're going to be the most challenged with. Um, so I want to encourage everyone to go there, but then also, um, April 1st, we are releasing the Bible study that is with Lifeway and it is called a woman who doesn't quit five habits from the book of Ruth. And it is completely different content. The only thing that is the same from the book to the Bible study are the habits and the verses. Like it's the same story of Ruth, obviously. Um, but yeah, we're going to have that Bible study. And then there's also going to be um, videos that Lifeway made that you can download um, to your computer. I didn't know this, Amy, like this is how they're doing things now that it's so techie, like no more DVDs. It's I was going to say, I remember the days of having to like gather the DVDs for Bible studies. Yeah. yeah, those days are fleeing us. It's crazy. I had no idea. Um, so I think they're called MP4s. That's what they're called. Um, so you can download those and watch them with a small group. I think doing this study or this reading this book with just one other person is going to be incredibly helpful, especially if you're a woman who struggles with um giving up on something that God has placed inside of you, having just one other person walk with you through this will be amazing for you. Absolutely. There's so much to accountability. And I think sometimes too, we can think God's doing something and, and it's not going the way we thought. And you need that accountability to stay on track. Right. Yeah. You need that person that can come beside you, you know, and like what we've been talking about today and just say, Nope, you're going to keep going. You're going to keep following after God. And even if you don't feel like you can be that person 100% of the time, um, I think I talk about this concept in the book, the power of 51%, how we become women who don't quit when we just keep going, even when we don't feel like it. Like if you can't give 100% today, if you can just give 51% today, you're not quitting. And so helping somebody else you know, keep giving that 51%. Eventually, both of you guys together are going to see the faithfulness of God. Oh my gosh, I love that. Because isn't it so much of a perfectionist to say, if I can't give 100%, I'm not doing it? Yeah, I think, and I'm going to be really vulnerable for a second. I think that is why I'm still struggling with my weight. I've lost some of the weight, but, um, because I talk about that struggle in the book too. But I think I go through these cycles where I'm like, oh my gosh, if I, you know, don't log my calories exactly, or if I miss a day, like it's over, it's finished, you know, and then it's weeks go by and then you're looking back and you realize, oh, I quit. That's why my jeans are feeling a little tighter now. <laughs> oh, isn't that so true? And I'm in, I'm like in the midst of quitting another, <laughs> another cycle of no sugar. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. It's so dangerous during Valentine's day, right? I know. <laughs> Oh, I know. <laughs> so hard. Um, yes, I love that. So I'm going to remember that at 51%. I think that's going to be really powerful. It's like you don't have to give everything perfectly all the time. You just got to stay in it just a little bit more than 50%. Yep, absolutely. 51%. That's all it takes. I love it. All right. Well, thanks again for being on today. Absolutely. Thanks, Amy. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Nikki. There's kind of three things that I take from that interview. Um, the first is just this idea of opposition. And I think it's so easy for us to quit and just to 
um, say, God must not be in this because I'm facing this opposition. And I do think that God closes doors. I think that's totally valid. But I think so many of us just quit too easily and um, just say, oh, gosh, that must, you know, that must not be God. God must not be in this because I'm facing this problem. But no, um, I don't think that's the case at all. And I just love her encouragement that opposition is an opportunity for God to show his power. And I just think that is so encouraging. And I hope we all can keep that in mind the next time that we face opposition. The second thing from that is I just um, love that she brought up Ruth and Naomi and just this idea that we have people that come alongside of us. And I just want to um, encourage you actually to encourage other people in your life. So if you see somebody who's really following after God, that you would just reach out and be one of the voices in their lives that's encouraging them. So just, you know, I can see God moving in your life. Um, just keep going. Don't let the this opposition stop you just anything you can do to just to keep encouraging women in your life that you see that's really following after God and um, I think we can just build each other up in that way and the third thing that I love from this um, interview is her idea of opening our fist and having open hands and I think that's just so important in all of these conversations that we have to have open hands first to be able to receive um, a call from God to begin with, but also just being open to how he moves us. And, you know, sometimes he does redirect us and that we would just have those open hands to be able to sense that. So just so thankful for Nikki and hope that was encouraging to you. Um, just want to remind you that we have the show notes over at featherspodcast.com. We also have the shop and um, we're still selling t-shirts and mugs and journals and um, bookmarks and all that. And it helps the podcast stay afloat. So we really appreciate that. Um, and so I just, again, thank you guys for listening and we will see you next time on Feathers. Feathers.